welcome back to our weekly segment rehash where we take a big look at some of the stories of the week and of course the big story that was last week was typhoon dolphin passed typhoon dolphin fortunately you know there was no huge catastrophic damage like we have with super typhoon caliber things but the thing that was most significant to those of us who follow the online community and those of us who are heavily involved in it is crystal this was the first time in guam's history when everybody was connected metaphorically and electronically you know i mean of course super typhoon pong sangwa was 13 years ago so that was pre myspace pre facebook pre smartphones pre ipads you know pre everything everybody knew what everybody else was doing we all know who had power we all know who did not add power it was pretty amazing and it was pretty overwhelming from both sides from the content creators and the content consumers because there was so much going around fortunately our audience said that they greatly appreciated everything that we were doing all right well um as part of the storm you know i did uh cover a lot of the utilities and um let's just say um it's, it was 13 years since our last major storm and it took weeks even almost a month just to get power back on and the great men and women at GPA were able to get back our power starting like within 48 hours mm -hmm. of the typhoons passing. So, you know, kudos, kudos to um, our GPA employees and then also our GWA employees who, um, you know, a lot of villages did have water throughout the storm. Some may have had little to, you know, little water pressure, um, but for the most part, a lot of residents did have water. So kudos to them too. Um, and then, you know, when we turn to our, our folks who sought shelter in, um, one of our several shelters it, it was it actually they were in the shelters throughout like one week after the storm and um you know one problem that did arise was an outbreak of lice there were 34 cases of lice but you know in a situation like that where you're living in a confined space um with you know many other people that's hard to avoid and so the hard-working people over at public health they went out there gave their lice treatments and you know and, and they tried to get bedding for the for the people um but isa also was covering shelters yeah it was actually a really heartbreaking yet inspiring experience this week speaking with the hardworking people again and with the mayor's office doe um, all the people who have been out there helping the shelteries. But it was heartbreaking because a lot of these people had, um, you know, their homes were really destroyed. So they were, I don't think anyone really expected the typhoon to be that bad. But the last, the last um, shelter did close Friday. I know that people are out there trying to get aid out to these families. But it's a continuing process. So the typhoon didn't just end last week. It's still ongoing and efforts are still ongoing. So we thank everyone out in the community who's been doing their part to help everyone affected by the storm. Absolutely. And I'm sorry to shift gears, but I think the real story of this week was the escapee from the Department of Corrections. It was early, uh, it was a Tuesday afternoon when they realized 26-year-old Mizey Alois was, was not at the prison. He's accused of rape back in October 2014. And he was captured on Wednesday night, a little over 24 hours after he was reported missing. And he told investigators that he had been on the run since Saturday night, early Sunday morning. So it was about three days he was on the run and no one noticed. So the investigation is ongoing at the prison and preliminary report should be out midweek next week. Well, it was a very, very busy lady. Thank you for all that you guys did. You guys were fantastic being out there every single day covering the events that face our island. And remember, everybody, if you want to join in the conversation, we encourage you to do so. Join us on any of our social media outlets, including the KUM News mobile app or KUM.com. We will be back with more after this.